Hey guys, my name is Javel and in this video series, I'm going to show you how to use React among other technologies to create this financial dashboard. If you haven't seen the previous video, the link is in the description. Guys, in the last video, we created the navigation section. In this video, we are going to make it mobile responsive, just like this. So to make this mobile responsive, we need to know when the width of the screen reaches a certain value. We can use the use theme and the use media query hooks from Material UI. Let's head over to the code. And before I start coding, I'm just going to check out onto a new branch. Hit check out. Dash B mobile responsive dash nav. All right, so let's open the navigation component and uh, let's call use theme. Um, just to point out that this was auto imported, so make sure that. If it wasn't auto imported for you, make sure that you import it. So the use theme gives us access to the material UI theme. And from there, we get access to the breakpoints. Next, let's call use media query. Um, this hook, we pass to it a breakpoint. So we have theme a breakpoint range to be more exact. So we pass into it theme dot breakpoints dot down XS. So the theme dot breakpoints dot down XS is our breakpoint range, which is between zero pixels and 600 pixels. So if the width of the screen is between zero pixels and 600 pixels, then this will return a, well, this will return true. And we can assign this value to a variable called matches. So if it's between this range, then this value become true. And if it's not between this, range zero pixels to 600 pixels then this value will be false we're going to use this variable to set the jar variant so if matches is true then we want the variant to be temporary and if it is not we want it to be permanent so let's just save this And uh, inside of our application, you can see at the top that the width is, well, you can, just, you can see the width at the top here. So when we bring it down just below 600 pixels, sorry, right now is at 600. Once it moves right below 600 pixels, nothing happens. Uh, still refresh. Ah, there we go. So once the width is right below 600 pixels, then the drawer or the navigation becomes temporary. And when the width of the screen is above 600, then it becomes permanent. Okay, okay. Let's bring it back down to, or bring it below 600 and we can close this navigation or the jar component um, once we close it there is no way to open it back so we need to create an app bar for this case all right back inside the code we are going to create our app bar component above the drawer component so here we have app bar all right that's auto imported Inside the app bar, we're going to have the toolbar. And then inside the toolbar, 
we are going to have a icon button. Inside the icon button, we have the menu icon. And then beside the icon button, we're just going to put a typography component here and put quality inside it. Let's save this and see what we get. So we have this menu icon. When we click it, then the drawer component should open. So let's add a unclick event on this icon button. Unclick would be equal to this toggle navigation function. Save this. Back inside the app, when I click the menu icon, then the drawer opens and it closes when I press this left chevron icon. Nice. Let's just add a bit of style to these two components inside the app bar. And also on the app bar, I want this to be green to match the brand. Okay, so that's um, inside the code on the icon button. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And let's add the property here, edge equals to start. Save this. It shifts over to the left a bit. All right, and then let's add the color to be inherit. Give this, it's it's white now, and uh, let's just give it a uh, an area label as well. Equal to menu, and then the typography the color will be inherit. And if the component will be an H1 component, and if the variation or the variant will be H6. I don't want it to be too big. All right, so inside the styles, let's define another class called app bar. And let's set the color to be, I don't think I ever used that green color. I think it is C1, 6, 7, uh, no, 6, E, 7, 7. Is it? Let's put a comma here. Um, oh, hash, hash C1, 6, E, that's not it. I think it's 6, E. Yeah, 6E C177. So let's save this. And let's apply that style to the app bar. So here we have class name is equal to classes dot app bar. Save. Ooh, shoot. Background. The background, not color. Background. So there we go. So the app bar is has this green color. Um, we're on the transactions page, and we're not seeing the transactions placeholder text that we defined for this page. That's because the app bar covers it. So we need to create a spacer of some sort to separate the app bar and the page content. So inside the styles, let's define another class called app bar spacer. And inside this class, we're going to grab all the styles from the material y theme component. So here we can say that the um, height 
actually no let's just spread here dot 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 theme dot mixins dot uh toolbar here we're just grabbing all the styles from the toolbar defined by Matthew Y. And then we're going to go into the app component. And uh, we are going to hmm, let's see. We're going to apply this style to this div. No, inside of this div. We're going to create this div here. And let's set the class name to classes dot at bar space or save this. And there we have the space between the app bar and the page content. All right, let's open the drawer and let's go to the dashboard. So we're on a dashboard. Uh, when we click on the dashboard menu icon or item, we notice that the drawer didn't close. So we need to fix that. So inside the navigation component, Let's just define another function called the close navigation. And then we're going to set open the pause. And then we're going to pass this function to the menu item here. So it's going to say on click would be equal to close navigation. And then inside the menu item, we're going to accept that on click property. And then on this list item, we're going to define the on click and assign it to the on click property here. Save this. Also save the navigation component. And now when I click accounts, the navigation closes. Uh, so click on that, that closes. We're on a dashboard page. Click on this, the drawer closes. We're on the transactions page. All right, let's see what happens when we widen the screen. You can see that the app bar is still visible. We want the app bar to be hidden when the width of the screen is greater than or equal to 600 pixels. Right, so this can be done using media queries in the styles. So to define a media query in the styles, we can just surround the breakpoint range with square brackets. So here we have theme dot breakpoints dot oh and here we have SM. Next the value would be the object containing our styles. We want the display to be set to none. All right, put the comma right here. And then let's save this. Now the app bar is hidden. And when I put the screen width to less than 600 pixels, then the app bar appears. And now you can see that we have this unnecessary space between well, above the page content, this dashboard displays folder text. So let's fix that using media queries again. In the styles, let's go to the app bar spacer. And we only want to apply the toolbar. The, <laughs> we only want to apply the toolbar styles when the width of the screen is between zero pixels and 600 pixels. That's Breakpoint range is theme dot breakpoints dot down. And here we put XS. 
And then we place this these styles inside that breakpoint range. So this now you can see that the extra space is removed when the width of the screen is above 600. And when it's below 600, you can see that it behaves the way we expect it to. All right, let's widen the screen again. Let's open the drawer and click on a menu item. You can see that when we click on the menu items, on the desktop view, it closes the drawer every time. So let's fix that. Inside of the navigation component, inside the close navigation function, we're going to first check if it matches is true. So if matches is true, then we set open the file. So we want this functionality only on mobile view. Let's save this. And let's open the navigation section and then let's click on menu item and the menu item remains open on the desktop view. If we go to the mobile view and we click on a menu item, it closes every time we press or click on a menu item. Let's refresh this. All right, so when I refresh the page, the app bar styles got removed. Um, so you may run into this problem. Uh, to fix it, all you have to do is Where is it? Let's go to the navigation component and make sure that the imports for the material UI components are placed above the use styles import. I'm just going to place the material UI component imports here. And then let's save this and then refresh. You can see that it fixes the problem. Um, so you may be wondering why this happened. I'm going to leave the link to the explanation in the description. All right, so that's it for today. In the next video, we will create a mobile responsive layout for the dashboard just like this.